on to the fantasy hands part, part one, the most fun part. Well, first you have to come up with some sort of an idea of what your fantasy hand would be. I am going to do a couple things. I'm going to distort the hand physically, also going to add some new textures, and I'm going to show you a little thing called paint effects. But where am I going with it? That's up to your creativity, how you want to represent your fantasy hand. You could think of an avatar or a creature that uh, you'd like to be or might be your alter ego. Or you could just use your imagination in any direction and come up with something. You could sketch something up in a sketchbook or you can use Pinterest or something to influence you in one direction or another. Maybe you'd have lizard-like hands so you'd have scales coming out of one side or the other. Maybe you're a very furry creature like a bear or something so you could adjust physically the size of your hands or the size of your fingers and maybe make claws. Choose something that's easily executable by the tools inside Maya. We can visualize pretty much anything but some things are more difficult than others. So I'll choose something that I know I can get away with but also don't feel limited. Don't feel limited by your imagination and experimentation. I'll show you things in paint effects later which can really throw some interesting possibilities your way without having the need to model. Okay, so my idea was to create some sort of a bird creature, like half bird, half human, or a bird man or something like that. So I would like to turn my hand into like an eagle's claw. So I found images such as this with like really detailed, clear texture. Here is another, and you can see how it uh, is very lizard-like and could have a very palpable bump, tactile lizard scale feeling. Maybe this is a kid's hand, I don't know, but that's a pretty, yeah, huge bird. Uh, and you could see the feathers coming out too here, which looks quite like fur. So that inspired me another way. I think I want feathers on one side of the hand and then scaly texture like this on the palm side of the hand. So in my bird man creature, I'm gonna have um, scales here, such as this type of scaly stuff. And on this side, I will have some feathers sprouting out. And I'll do that with paint effects. So I'm going to texture it all over with this type of texture. And then I'm going to use paint effects to get the feathers on one side. I'm also going to distort the physical shape to have nails come out like this. Setting some examples of feathers. Some of these feathers, or the look of feathers, are built into paint effects. We don't actually have to draw each feather. And examples of different kind of bird creatures which might possess this hand. Bird man or bird creature that would be integrated uh, imaginatively with feathers. Certainly, clearly in the world of fantasy. Do look at all different examples you can find. Just a little bit of research on kind of bird creature designs out there. Think of the hand as a portrait as symbolizing all the rest of the body. Here's another kind of a bird creature. Here's another weird kind of sad looking bird humanoid creature, I should say. How to represent feathers, how the feathers may integrate with the hand. I'm going to do it like this so feathers are coming off the back of the hand. Think about ways you can take inspirational examples, yet make your own creature. Make sure to use your own ingenuity and imagination to make it truly your own in the end. So if you can draw a sketch well and do uh, some sketches or color sketches or anything up on paper on Photoshop, it's really going to help a lot. Do search the internet, again, for artistic examples and variations of this theme. How are the different ways to represent feathers, perhaps? Maybe with cardboard or paper craft, something kind of unimagined before, or maybe a little silly. And perhaps, conceptually, different types of interpretations of birds. Here we have a variety of artist examples of birds. Here is Larry Bird. I guess we can't use that. And an angry bird. But anyway, you're looking and you must find some sort of ins inspiration so you have it in your head before you start going ahead and charging in a mile. Okay, we're going to start with that base texture of the scaly, reptilian-like, orangey skin of this bird of prey example and getting it all over the hand. First, let's make a bit of a physical modification. I want to keep half man, half bird type of thing. So. Uh, I'm going to extend these nails to create more curved talons like this. I'm going to go in here to this face right here on each one of the fingers and extrude. Pushing out. Now I sh should be working in the side view, not the perspective. Here we are in the side view with one nail here. I showed you in a demo, I think in the third week, how to make a CV curve and extrude along that CV curve. We're going to use that actually for these tendrils. Talons, I guess I should say. So staying in the side view. Going to draw a CV curve first. 
create. Curve tools, CV curve. Make sure in the side view, and I'm going to do something like a curve that would be like a long tendril like that. Okay. Reshaping this talon to a bit shorter to my liking. And then checking quick in the side view, in the perspective view now. Okay, in the side view now I'm going to thicken up a little bit the base or the root of this talon, this long nail here, and then shift select the curve, and then I'm going to extrude. So under edit mesh, now I want to make sure that I go to the option box for extrude, because I want to put in, usually the divisions are on one, and if you get that, you recall, you'll get a, an effect like that, not right, so undo that. I'm going to put in the division number 15 separate polygons and I'll get something like that. So I'm going to pop open the outliner if you haven't used it before. It's very handy, just a menu list of all the items that you've created and exist in, my, in your scene. I'm going to find that curve and I'm going to find that surface and all the different properties. So if I'm selecting that poly surface, surface shape, or you can of course just select the mesh here. Popping open the inputs, if you didn't delete history, you'll have it right here. Extrude face, the input extrude face. That's the operation you just did to do extrude this face. It may already be open. Then scroll down, you have something called taper. You see that? And then middle mouse button, drag. And you can taper the end of it to a sharp point. So that's what I have in the smooth version in the perspective twirling around it and I can reshape a little bit if I'd like. That curve is still there in construction. If I can grab a point I can move it and add some flare or twist or anything I want to it and maybe reshape it. If you can't get the curve inside you can always use the outliner. Going under Windows Outliner to get this. You can always grab the curve right there so you know where it is up and down arrows to select different keys, different um, CVs that is. Okay, I'm going to do all the rest and uh, cut back all the rest of the nails and I'll be using the same method. Just make sure to delete the construction history once you're done forming that nail so it doesn't evolve or distort or reshape it anymore. You, if you're happy with that shape, just go and select it, edit, delete by type, history and um, that will go away. Okay, after adding the other nails, this is the result I have with the super claws, talons coming out. Keeping everything one mesh is going to be very important for modeling habits, for um, skinning and rigging to a skeleton and the efficiency of that. Um, very good for um, the workflow of the game industry too. So. I didn't add extra nails, so I had that extruding from the existing mesh. Next I'm going to do the last touch-ups of some physical changes. I'm just going to make the hand a little bit, the fingers a little bit more stubby and I'm going to change to vertex select and that hit B for the soft select and maybe I'll aim for right in the center and get my diameter brush quite big and I'm just going to really easily push these fingers to be a little bit more stubby. I don't know why, I just like that as a, as a design. I could have gone the other way and made them really long but this is my, uh, my choice. My particular design, I was thinking going like that. So on this side, it increases the side of the palm. Otherwise, I think I'm done modifying the mesh. And here it is with the textures turned on, which is starting to look nice and a little bit creepy. Okay, I'm going to add this 
type of scaly texture just to the palm side of the hand because I plan this side to be covered in feathers and you won't see it much anyway. Pushed and patched and uh, painted areas for this palm new texture of bird-like scales and fitting that into the back of the hand like this and because it's easier and a little faster maybe I'll just get kind of reptilian flat texture it'll be a little bit easier to paint in these areas because it's uh, open up flat for me to grab and spread around here I found this nice reptile uh, gold scaly skin texture I think that'll work just fine I'm gonna fade it in a bit and then erase the sides and kind of melt it into the skin existing texture like this however you choose to do it use your own painting skills or what do you what you may already be good at so I can erase one texture into another mix them together a little bit to get a uh, more natural imperfect looking surface some, something like that and then maybe use some of the stuff to stamp tool into the fingers a little bit more of painting filling in all the old flesh areas with some scaling make sure where you're around the edges of the shells it's uniform in color and value and texture so when that shell wraps around and the, the seams touch each other on the Maya mesh it will be as similar as possible not showing too much of a difference again this will be the palm of the hand and this will be the back of the hand the back of the hand here will be covered by feathers while also having a little bit of the human skin present as well to give it that hybrid feeling and look so let's see some of those creases I will save this and pop it into the mesh in Maya. Uh, flatten the image and I'm saving it as color text fantasy. Then I'll go to Maya and where the color, I put the color in the AI standard surface. I'm going to break connection and add that new texture. File texture, just ignore the red part. Color text fantasy use. And there we go. As I was talking about the edges before, this could probably be bent, blended a little bit better. But um, also I know part of it's going to be covered with feathers so I can find ways to fudge. There I did a little bit of repainting right on the edge here of that where that thumb meets the palm, but I'm not going to I'm not going to really sweat that. And if we look at the nails, we could see we didn't have a UV shell, particularly for those nails. We could cut out new shells for it. If we take a look in the UV editor, we see it added the shells sort of right on top of the other ones. It's probably be easier just to color these in a little bit black. Um, that detail is just a simple little addition to modify. I think it looks good how it looks almost stretched out of, well, if you look at this stretched out of like uh, hair almost hair like nail like material so just going back to the color map I'm just gonna see where all of those nails are going and I'm gonna add like black I'm going to paint uh, black right in here it would help a lot but I don't I'm just winging it adding a little bit of darkness black here not too much because it's just the end of that because it's gonna make the end of the finger dark too and saving that and trying it. Okay, back to Maya, and this is the result. Let's add some dark. It looks imperfect, but it looks organic and kind of cool to me. I'm just going to leave it. I'm just tightening up a little bit uh, the soft edges by using uh, some creative dodge and burn tool here, like that. That's all. I'm going to leave the nails like that. And I'm going to produce uh, really quick a bump map and a spec map just from this will fall into place pretty quickly. Just taking this image, you would remember I'm going to desaturate it, take all the color away. Next, I don't need these areas so black for the nails. So there's nothing really pushing in and out with it. So 
I'm just going to color them over with the stamp tool or such, or just with the black kind of gray stuff. Like that, just using the stamp tool to cover it. And then I'm going to smooth a little bit. I'm going to use the, uh, I can use the smudge tool and just smooth over the nail area because I know that it's not supposed to have any type of major bump or scale of pattern on it, like a bumpiness. So just smoothing that. Next, I will adjust the contrast to the more extremes of black and white using brightness contrast. To exaggerate a little bit by bringing out the dodge tool. You remember how we accentuate some of the lights and darks this way. This is already naturally pretty contrasty, so we don't have to do much. And then I use the burn tool to burn in some of the shadows. Like that. Okay. Then save that as a bump map, fantasy bump, and bringing that into the mesh in Maya. Okay, scrolling down to the standard surface of Arnold. Remember we had that geometry sub menu and we had a bump map already there. We're going to change that out for the new bump map here for the fantasy skin. And that's what it looks like just in the hardware render view. It's probably a little bit too bumpy so we could bring down the node and material attributes. We're looking for that bump node. Here we go. This is the bump depth and bump value. We can bring it, push it in or push it out like that. We can just uh, adjust it so it sort of looks good in a medium shot. Something like maybe 0.3 or 0.2. Come back and say, okay, that looks pretty good. Then lastly, we're going to do a specular map, and that will be pretty fast. For a specular map, it would probably be easier just to start again from the color, desaturate it, okay, desaturated the image. Then I'm going to reverse the uh, image. That is invert the values, so image adjustments invert, so black becomes white, vice versa. Now I'm going to dim down the image even further like this in brightness and contrast. And you see these shiny, the white parts are going to be the most specular, the most glossy. Okay, saving that specular image, bringing it into the mesh on the specular node, the standard. Let's save it as spec. Color text fantasy use. Then under the specular sub menu, color, we're going to reload this as this new specular there. So hitting seven and bringing the light in, just a test light, and using some of the lights, all the lights that we had before, you could see how the light is going to be catching on the shiniest part of the nails, catching that specular. See how it's a little glossy, a little shiny there? And looking pretty cool on the edge of that thumbnail there. Also with the interaction with the bump looks nice. I also turned up here the sub menu called Coat in the Standard Shader. Popping it open right here, coat. I put the weight up so it creates a little bit more shininess. You can see it moving the light around, how it's catching the shininess there if you want to make them seem glossy. I don't know, maybe they're not painted nails, so maybe you can keep them a little rough, it's optional. And I'm aiming these lights a little bit better. Okay, next is the really fun part. We're going to use paint effects 
and paint some feathers on the back of the hand coming off. So if you haven't used paint effects before, I think I showed you quick, but I'm going to select the hand. I'm going to choose modeling. I'm going into generate. The first thing to do is make paintable. Make sure the mesh is selected, then make the surface paintable by saying make paintable. Then generate again, get brush. The content browser pops open, open to the paint effects brushes. And there's a ton of crazy things in here. There's hair. Let's say you wanted to put some black hair on the back. Um, you see how it's just sticking to the surface. Hold B down and drag the left mouse button to set your brush size and you can just paint straight away. Something like that. Right. And these are ready-made brushes. They have this distinctive look that you could play with to customize much better. But for this project, you could just use them right out of the box. But note, it's going to get really heavy. As I'm painting with this, consider how many um, pieces of new material and elements are going in there, geometry, etc. So there's a lot. This is just one type of hair. And I'm going to undo that. Okay. But there's all kinds of other crazy stuff. You can experiment here. Plants, plant mesh. This one's mushrooms or something. Oh, it's sticking. All kinds of stuff like barbed wire. It's kind of large. You can scale it down and draw it smaller. There's effects. There's just kind of fun, completely random stuff in here. Food, chips, cheeseburgers, flowers, mesh. Um, fire, set on fire. Some of these actually animate if you attach to it. Any of the effects that are really intense or really memory heavy, it has a little clock here indicating that it's uh, it's going to slow down and possibly crash your mind if you put too much. Anyway, there's one for feathers. Clicking right here, there's one for feathers, and we have some choices right there. Um, I'm going to try this feather exotic large. You'll have to play with the brush size to see uh, what it can do in relation to your mesh. Let me try this other one. It's very similar, feathers exotic. These ones are kind of small, let's see, so it's kind of the same design, one's like much bigger, smaller for different types of feathers. Anyway, this is more what I was thinking about. What I'm not doing in paint effects is drawing a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of stuff and letting go. What I'm doing is just short strokes and in the direction I want to go and make sure I'm mixing up the size of the brush like that. Just do a few and then maybe you can make your brush a little bit smaller. Just do a stroke and a few more. Make your brush a little bigger, you know. Try to mix it up and then mixing up the feather types and the sizes here or there. Maybe putting the smaller ones near the edges, going smaller still where it starts to meet the palm. Like that, maybe. Just mixing it up. Oops. Oh, I shouldn't be going too crazy. I'm going to delete some of these top feathers because it looks pretty cool to show that texture at the top. Okay, I'm going to stop there with the paint effects, hold off on any more feathers, and this is that final look. Now I'm going to use the same lighting and setup as last time, and I can do a test render in the render view with Arnold. Here's just the last image that I rendered, still up there, which is the natural looking hand. I'm going to make sure to do a smaller test resolution. I'll just do 
It's less set at 2K, so I'll do 75% of that, which is about 700 pixels. Okay, let's test render that. Okay, this is the result, and you'll see there's uh, no feathers on there. Renders it fairly efficiently, but um, the feathers are not there. So why are the feathers not there? Um, the feathers not there because paint effects was uh, developed before there was the Arnold renderer and even before the mental ray renderer and It is a Maya software post render effect So it's not showing up in uh, any of those other renders only the Maya render and we don't want to render in the Maya render We can't do anything like this So we need to use Arnold and stick to Arnold. So we're forced to convert these paint effects into a form that can be seen and rendered by Arnold, which would mean we have to convert them to geometry. So I'm going to select all the feathers and then do a conversion. So I might as well go to the outliner in Windows, outliner, and I'll see all of these strokes. So the paint effects were made. Every time I drew on it, it created a line called a stroke, which feathers are attached to it. So I'm just going to grab all these strokes make sure I don't miss anything. This is going to be really heavy, so you might save it before this. It certainly could crash your laptop or if my running off something, maybe you can't do something like it yours. So feel free to just use any type of a scale, some sort of a flat texture change. That could be fine for this project. So with all the feathers selected and strokes in the outliner, I'm going to go to modify, convert, and then choose paint effects to polygons. Let's just use, use it straight away, see what happens. It might crash, might give you a warning, because there's a lot of detail there. Okay, it looked like it did it, but it did give us a warning. Warning, leaf poly limit exceeded 100,002 faces and created, it, it reduced some of them. It couldn't create all of them. So we could have gone into the conversion option box um, into modify, convert, and fudged with that to see if we can get it, uh, it lower down and more economized. Um, so do save it and just do tests before. All right, now these are... Okay, so here's a rendered view of it. I'm gonna render again and see how long it takes. It's certainly adding render time, it's really slowing things down. But not by that much on my system. Yours might be different. And the color changed a little bit, but interesting result. So I think we're going to pump up the lights a little bit more to light up the feathers, or just bringing the light a little bit closer. So the light closer. And make sure you save often, because it does like to crash and things like this. And doing another render of this result is coming. Okay, I'm doing an IPR render of just the top of the nails here. And I did throw in an extra light. I kept it around. This point light right here, if I draw a square, this is the IPR, so it's going to update. This light right here is just to edge light the part of the nails to uh, pop them up from the background. So. I'm going to increase its exposure a little bit. I put in the number 10, just so I get a little bit extra boost to the lighting of those nails, sort of like that, to show off the glossiness of them and also um, edge light them. I'd also like to change the color a little bit from plain old white to a little bit of color space, maybe blue. I can put in Green might look a little weird, but maybe a little bit uh, extra blue purplish. That's a little bit too much. Stick with blue highlight like that. Might look pretty good. Okay, another quick re render of our fantasy hand um, in this slightly changed lighting, fully framing the feathers. Looking kind of like that. Interesting looking. You might want to throw in a little point light here or there just to add a little rim, a little hot spot or edge light to areas to, to add interest. So I duplicate and put a little point light right here to add some more lighting interest there. 
It's a bit too much, a bit too saturated, so I'm going to turn it down. It should look like it's on fire. Something like that may look pretty good, or moving the light a little bit further away. Or perhaps closer to this nail to light up that rim, that edge. You know, something like that. All right, I think we're almost ready to render. One thing I'd like to see a bit more is that subsurface. Maybe we could get a little bit more subsurface scattering in here. Let's do a quick Arnold render shot of this closer up area. That looks pretty cool, and we're really feeling the texture and the slickness of the talons and saying the nails, but we're not seeing much subsurface. So selecting the mesh, material attributes, and we're going to the standard surface shader, and we're looking for the subsurface and playing with that. So I'm going to so I had before, change the subsurface color. I got to increase the weight, went back down to zero. So I'm going to increase the weight and add a little bit of heat, yellow and reddish pink, or maybe more darker red. And let's do an IPR render so we can update the area. All right, right away, that's pretty heavy. We can tell that's a bit too much light transmission. It's lighting up the whole hand. So we just want to isolate this top area where it's a subsurface scattering. So I'm putting under subsurface submenu the weight down. And maybe this radius color and subsurface could be a little darker, more saturated. It might help. And then subsurface color could be a little brighter, a little more orangey. Let's see. You'll have to fiddle with this on your own, so I'm just doing this juggling act between weight, subsurface color, radius, and scale which I'll work in concert to give a result like this. Okay, in my own visual opinion of how this looks, that is, I think um, very little subsurface is really needed. Um, so I put it very, very low, weight 0 0.002, and otherwise it starts to look maybe not as good or a little bit less Maybe I should say it looks a little bit uh, paper-like when it's too much scattering. This nice subtle amount of scattering that's going on, see the slight dark red, let's say medium red or pinkness that's coming in along the edges is, is pretty nice. Okay, and so there it is. This will be my image for my fantasy hand. I'm going to find a nice angle, sort of dramatic angle, frame that nice. So mostly have room around that as such try to fit it mainly within the shape and we're going to do a 2k render so first let's uh, good to save it first actually okay then we're going to change the options to test resolution we're going to go back to the 2k size and you might recall we set that here just to show you again it was set on 540. We're going to make sure that says 2K square. And we're going to set the size here, test resolution under 2K. And we're going to render one more time for the final image. Okay, there is the final image I'm going to use rendered uh, 2K. Now, I could better place it in the center, and I would like you guys to do so. So it's placed kind of dead in the center, but in a good, um, appealing, and dramatic pose like this in relation to the lighting, something like this. Uh, I could probably re-render it to have that uh, centered a little more or a little better. And remember, if I want, I can click this up here, which shows us the edge. Here it shows us. OK, that one right here shows the edges. So you can line it up a little better for your render. And here is the beautiful 2K final render of that, and that is going to be saved as my fantasy hand image. So I'll just go up here and file, save image, 
just save it as a JPEG. I have the real hand saved here. I'm just going to save the fantasy hand right next to it. All right. To remind you, when we open that image that we saved and see it, it looks dark. It needs to be adjusted in gamma. It's a very easy, just one or two step process. Opening it in Photoshop, opening up exposure and changing the gamma to 2.2. It's resaving it, that's all. So again, here in Photoshop, I'm gonna go to Image, Ex Adjustments, Exposure. And that pops this open and a gamma correction, I'm gonna put 2.2. Right, so that image should look like this image. It's a different size, but otherwise exactly the same in gamma, so it's going to look identical. And this is what you save. It's your final image. Okay, and there we have it in a side-by-side. -side. I just opened up the two separate images and put them next to each other. Um, this is the project where you have our render of a real hand and render of the fantasy hand, so you're gonna turn in this image and then turn in this image and then you can just put your Maya binary of your um, two images in the same uh, folder. If you, uh, sorry, the same scene if you want. Uh, you can turn in this one and to make it simple, you could just import the other hand into it. I thought that would be simpler. Otherwise, uh, you're going to turn this project with a uh, folder, a zipped folder, and inside it you have these two images, you have your Maya binaries, so I can look at the mesh, and I would like to also see the textures that you've used. So include any textures, you've used color, if you've used a specular or bump map, put those in there on their texture folder so uh, I can see that as well. This really concludes the project, but I will do one more video as a bonus that will show if you want how to pose the hand, if you want to put a skeleton inside it and give it a pose, this is not required for the assignment if you so have the desire to try it.